All right, here we go. We are in game six, Leafs versus Oilers. It's a rematch from last game where the Oilers won 3-1 in probably the most boring game in the NHL thus far this season, probably including last season as well. Uh, not, not the best game last game. It's a new look Leafs lineup this game. Matthews and Thornton are both out of the lineup. Brooks and Engvall are in. As you can see, these are the lines. I don't mind them. So you have JT going up. He's between Marner and Hyman. Good. Hyman's back on the first line. I think he should probably be there anyway. He's just a workhorse. You got Kerfoot playing between BC and uh, Nylander. I like to see how that's going to work out. You've got Angval in there. Uh, you got Brooks in there. Spets is moving to the wing. Sweet. All right, let's get right into it. Lettinen is out, though. Um, due to the Thornton injury last game, Leafs went from 11 forwards to 10. It was just a bit more difficult, I think. So looking at it, they decided to go 12 forwards and 6 D, just in case there is an injury. If it's an injury to a D, you can play through 5 D. It's a little bit easier. But playing 10 forwards, that's, that's a rough go. And speaking of rough goes, it's a rough start for the Leafs. About 30 seconds in, Oilers on a two-on-one. Dry Seidel uh, feeds it over. I think it's to Yamamoto, actually. And whew, what a move by Anderson. He reaches across. He takes away basically the whole bottom of the net, takes away the space, and Yamamoto just hits the side of the net. Uh, Anderson, he, he looked really good versus Winnipeg. Looks good last game versus Edmonton. Looks good already to start this game. Then four minutes in, and wow, already four minutes into the game, and the Oilers already have three odd man rushes. This is probably more odd man rushes in these four minutes than was in the entirety of both teams last game. Simmons then gets a great chance, but Koskinen stays with him, and he holds the net. Basically, he just takes it out takes the net away from him. He doesn't overcommit to the well, his right side. Uh, if you're looking at Simmons, his left side. Doesn't overcommit. Simmons wants him to go towards the post. Koskinen does it. Great effort by uh, by Hyman and patience by Simmons on that play. But Koskinen stands tall. There's then some good chances both ways. Uh, Hyman's work down low. I just gotta say, is just another level. Like he just he outworks you. He wants that puck. He's tenacious. Uh, it, it's it's something to behold. And then, of course, on the flip side, then you look at someone like McDavid and his speed, his elusiveness. It's just insane. It's in full effect here in this game so far. Then at 2.56, uh, Anderson then pulls up. Ooh, look what I have on McDavid. Uh, McDavid gets the puck in front of that. It's on his backhand and gloves saved by Anderson. That was beautiful. Then Simmons, Angle, McKay of Muzzin and Hall. They just outworked the Oilers for a good, I would say, 30 to 40 seconds in the offensive zone. Koskinen needs to make some big time saves and then at the end Simmons with a nice tip Koskinen holds on uh, just to mention uh, in this broadcast Gord Miller's on and he mentions that RNH Ryan Nugent Hopkins is a UFA after this season um, watch him play this game and last season he had a good season the season before that uh, I think he's he's under undervalued underappreciated yeah uh, Maybe he doesn't get talked about that much, mainly probably because McDavid and Dreisaitl are on the team. But he's he's a good player. He can play the wing. He can play center. But my question is, where where do you think he ends up? Will he will he stay in Edmonton? Can they afford to keep him? If I'm a team, if I'm a GM, I'd take a run at him. I'd take a run at the former first overall pick. Uh, every team in the NHL would love an RNH. Every team would love to have a Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Versatile player, basically can give you anywhere between 55 to 65 points over 82, C uh, 82 games. And he's only 27 years old. Anyway, so at the end of the first period, uh, well, let's just move on to the second, shall we? Uh, to start the second, and of course, another rough start for, for the Leafs. And it's McDavid, he takes advantage of the Bogosian matchup. He literally just, it's like a 360 spin and just, just flies by him, basically. Just flies by him. Uh, luckily, Anderson holds tight uh, and is able to wait out McDavid. I think he makes the save there when McDavid goes to his forehand. Just thank you, Anderson. Keith, avoid that matchup, please. <laughs> uh, then, of course, penalty on Engvall. He, uh, I think it was for hooking. 
But the first chance on the power play for the Oilers actually doesn't go to the Oilers. It's actually Ilya Mikheyev. So it's actually, yeah, Ilya Mikheyev, again, just, just being a workhorse. Uh, the speed, uh, the move around the defender. He's got it all. He just has no finish, bless him. But once he gets one, and I tell you, once he gets one, the floodgates will open for him on these chances, on these penalty kill chances, on these shorthanded chances. Uh, Mikheyev, he's going to score eventually, and I, I can't wait to see it. Anderson also, solid throughout the PK. Leafs then get a power play after successful kill, hooking by Turris. And this is when it gets frustrating to be a Leafs fan. Leafs are la lazy and exhausted. Basically, Oilers dump it. Riley tracks back, but he's going so slow. Uh, Anderson corrals the puck, but then it goes into the trapezoid. So there's a little bit of uh, miscommunication there. I think he thought Riley was going to be back in time, uh, but he has no gas. Of course, Yamamoto, he beats Riley to the puck, goes around the net, throws out front, goes to Nylander, but Nylander gets his pocket pick by Dry Seidel. Nylander, weak play there. He needs to be stronger on the puck. Leon just then uses his long reach, puts it far side, slides the far side on Anderson. one nothing Oilers. Damn it. Then the Leafs' second unit comes out, and it's Adam freaking Brooks with the high slot tip off the skate from Spezza. 1-1, gets it right back, negates the goal. There we go. Brooksy scores, and it's 1-1. One, one. So, yeah, 1-1. One, one. Good on it. Good on it. Leafs are coming back after that awful play uh, leading to that dry side of goal. So then midway through the second, you get another Leafs chance. Uh, I think it's, I forget who it was. Maybe Larson tries to throw the puck around, and it's Dermott with the great pinch. Uh, Edmonton turns, turns it over to Kerfoot. Kerfoot behind the net, feeds Nylander out front. Willie pauses and freezes Koskin and freezes basically the entire Edmonton Oilers team. Feeds VC, wide open net, top shelf goal, 2 1 Leafs, oh so pretty. VC second of the year from Nylander once again, 2 1 Leafs. Then Spezza takes a penalty. And then on the delayed penalty, Anderson goes old school, boom, off the helmet, safe. Oilers off to the power play. And I just wanted to make a note on this. Uh, during the power play, what I noticed is the Leafs penalty kill is playing really, really smart. Basically, the Oilers like that, bring it up and then drop it. So then like McDavid picks it up with speed. So what the Leafs did here is the four checker, in this case Kerfoot, basically hung back um, behind the puck carrier and basically stifled the, uh, the drop back pass. Uh, so the Oilers couldn't make that pass, and it just ended up messing up their whole system. Uh, the whole Oilers team, the other four players, were basically at a standstill in the neutral zone, slash at the Leafs' blue line. And basically what happened, they, they tried to enter slowly. Leafs just out-muscled them. The stagnant Oilers literally can't do anything. And the Leafs just kept clearing the puck. It was a great adjustment by the Leafs on the penalty kill. And I just wanted to note, Kerfoot, McKayev, and company did this so well today. Uh, then... On this, uh, I think it was on the power play though. Well, there's do finally enter the zone, and Muzzin almost scores against Anderson twice, twice this period anyway. Uh, one goes wide after James Neal, of course, real deal. James Neal is great on the power play. He goes with the uh, basically the dry side of play. He gets gets double stopped by Anderson, and Muzzin just pokes it away, and it just misses the post. Just goes wide. And then again, not far after, I think it was, I think it was, who was it? Uh, Darnell Nurse. Darnell Nurse fed it out front um, and it hits off Muzzin's leg or his skate. But Anderson's able to hold on, make the save. Whew, that would have been, that would have sucked for Muzzin, wouldn't it? Anyway, after two, Leafs are up 2-1. Then, beginning of the third period. Okay, it's been a rough start of the first. Rough start of the second. Can't be a rough start of the third, can it? Yes, it can. Ethan Bear with the point shot, and of course, about 30 seconds in, Connor freaking McDavid. Friggin' Connor McDavid. High tip. So he's basically coming across his body on Riley. It sticks out. I honestly, it was Anderson moved to make like the blocker save. 
beautiful tip goes between Anderson's legs. No chance for Anderson. 2-2. Two, two. What a play by McDavid. Uh, the man the man is a hockey god, isn't he? Wow. 2-2. Two, two. And then following that, Leafs with the majority of the pressure after the goal. Uh, Kerfoot, VC, Neil in line. They look great. Kerfoot has some jump tonight, as does Mikheyev. Really, Ilya Mikheyev, I thought he looked great. I just, I just... I just wish he could score. He must have had some good soup before the game because the Superman was buzzing. Anyway, uh, who else played well tonight? Uh, Simmons had a hard-fought game, as well as Engvall. So taking advantage of the opportunity to get in the lineup. Barabanov, he didn't see much ice time, though when he was on, he, he made a couple good, good key blocks. He did his job. He wasn't noticeable, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes being noticeable, it's usually for mistakes. In this case, not. So good on Barabanov. Uh, moving on, though. So he scores 2-2. Hyman makes a great rush. Koskinen with the save, but it leads to a power play for the Leafs. Zachary Hyman, once again, being the brute that he is. We all love you in Leafs land. I think my next jersey might have to be a Zachary Hyman. A Zach Hyman jersey. But Dubas, come on. Just sign the man. You Sort out the cap later. Just sign the man. Uh, tons of chances for the Leafs. Hyman just misses Marner, and Koskinen erupts Tavares, but no problem, JT. JT says, get me once, shame on me. Get me twice, nah, -ah. not today. Marner shot, Tavares tip, goal, 3-2, Leafs. Oilers then turn on the pressure, McDavid to Barry, one-timer, Anderson makes the glove save. He said before the game, he's tracking pucks better, and right there just shows it. Oilers pull the goalie, call with hustle, negates and icing. That's the kind of... Uh, pressure they the, the kind of effort the Leafs need Leafs then do eventually ice it but now on the next face off after a timeout break jam play Freddie stays tight to the post makes another save another face off draw Tavares wins it Marner gets it out turnover by Edmonton Marner gets it again empty net he's not making this mistake 4-2 win for the Leafs over the Oilers Freddie looks outstanding once again no Thornton no Matthews no problem Leafs 4 Oilers 2 Leafs are now 4-2 on the season. Calgary next. Go Leafs go.